Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today's topic is going to be about how to price your artwork. This is the bane of every artist's existence is how to price your artwork. Because if you price too high and you don't sell any as a new artist, then you feel rejected. You feel like nobody wants to buy my work. It, it, and then you start wondering if you should even be an artist in the first place. So that's not good for, for anybody. If you price your work too low, then not only are you doing yourself a disservice and all of the hard work that you put into your piece, but you're also, uh, you're, you're doing a disservice to the artists around you. And collectively as artists, we all need to sort of band together and realize the value of our worth. If we don't realize the value of our own art, then nobody else is going to. So where's that sweet spot in the middle? Where is it that you should be pricing your work so that you can sell as an early uh, artist on the scene um, and start foraging uh, relationships with customers that will be with you for a long time? Okay, so first of all, I'm going to share with you the formulas that I have done a little bit of research on. You can do this yourself. Um, I just kind of done this for you um, off of the internet. Uh, there are formulas all over the place as to how you can uh, charge or how you can calculate the formula so that you can charge accordingly. Um, I suggest you try these various formulas and then sit with them for a while and just kind of see, play with the numbers, see what sort of sits well with you. Because really, I think that if you do that, you will have this gut instinct. You'll have an inner feeling as to whether or not you feel like it, it it's sitting well with you. You can always tweak the numbers but it'll give you a starting place instead of just feeling like you have to just come up with something at random out of your head. That is no way to price an artwork, by the way. So use this as a starting guide. I am got my cheat sheet here because math is involved. And as you know, I stink at math. So we're going to cheat with my paper here. So this is straight from artbusiness.com. This particular formula is. So you take the cost of your materials. If you work in Canvas, you take how much did it cost me to buy this canvas? And how much did it cost for me to use this paint? Um, if you bought brushes, things like that, whatever your materials were that you used to create that particular painting, you take that. Um, then you take how many hours it took for you to create that painting. Then you figure out how much you want to charge yourself per hour. Now this should be the easiest part for you. How much do you want to get paid for doing your artwork? Be realistic, be reasonable. If you want to get paid $100 an hour, the same as a psychiatrist gets paid <laughs> right off the bat, you might not probably sell as much artwork as you would otherwise. Um, but again, you have to see what sits well with you. Um, so once you have those things figured out, then you do the math. So I've got an example here for you. So let's say that your materials cost $50. And then let's say it took you 20 hours to create your painting. And let's say that you want to pay yourself $20 an hour. So you take $20, okay, uh, for the hour that you want to pay yourself, plus, or excuse me, see, I'm already messing up, $20 per hour times 20 hours that it took you to create it, plus the cost. So if the materials cost you $50, and it took you 20 hours to create it, and you pay yourself $20 an hour, then the total for that would be $450. Okay, I hope that made sense. So that's one way to do it. Um, the other way that you can do it is go strictly by how much um, you want to, uh, let's see, what else do I have here? Uh, 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 you can work uh, by square inch, that's the other way that people sometimes do it. Especially if you work in commission, a lot of times it's easier just to figure out per square inch because 
customers will then understand exactly what to expect if you work on uh, by for commission. God, did I have too much coffee today? I am talking a mile a minute. Okay, so typical would be um, to base on size, which is easy for customers to understand. So for example, if you have a five by five inch painting, okay, then you add those two together. Five plus five equals 10. So that's 10 linear inches. And then you multiply that by your hourly wage. Again, how much do you want to get paid per hour? So if you want to get paid $20 an hour and you have a 10 linear inch painting, then 10 times 20 equals $200. So for a five by five inch painting, then you would charge $200. So that would be consistent for you. So I never really did do linear inch. How I did my own artwork was I wanted to give myself a fair hourly wage and, and then I went by how long it took me to complete my paintings. That's how I ended up calculating my own prices and I pretty much do that to this day. Uh, that seems to be what works best for me. So again, you just kind of have to sit with things for a while and see how they're going to fare with you. Um, but there are two things that I want you to uh, consider before I let you go today. Um, one is please don't sell work that you are feeling too attached to. Let's say that you create a piece that is the masterpiece of all pieces that you've ever done. Uh, chances are if you have that much of an attachment to this piece, you are going to price it too high because you're emotionally attached to it. If you do a painting of a memoriam of your dog, your customers are not going to see the value in it as much as you are because it has emotional meaning for you. You're going to want to price higher or subconsciously you're going to price higher because you really don't want to sell it. Um, and that can just confuse your customers. So if you have a piece that you have finished Wait till you get over your initial love affair with it and then post it for sale when you're not so emotionally attached to it. If that doesn't happen, keep the painting. You don't have to sell everything that you create and it's okay to keep paintings in your house that you love. This painting that I have behind me up here on the wall that you see in many, many of my videos, I love this painting. I don't think that I could put a price on this painting. And if I wanted to sell it, I would sell it for way more than what it's worth, which shows me that I should not be selling it. So that is the one thing that I want you to take uh, into consideration when you're pricing your work. Um, the second thing that I want you to take away with um, when you're thinking about things like this is if you create, let's say, an 11 by 14 inch canvas and it takes you 50 hours to finish it, um, don't expect your customers to pay the same amount for that particular work if at the same as if you created another canvas that was 11 by 14 that took you four or five hours to create it. You can't really expect to charge a huge difference in price. Your customer base is not going to understand that one of them took you 50 hours and the other one took you five hours, so you're charging five times as much for this one as opposed to the one that took you less time. Uh, generally, people don't, they don't understand that. If they see two 11 by 14 canvases side by side, they're going to expect you to charge consistently. So that's one thing that you really need to, to take into consideration. Um, there's something positive that you should remember about this. If it does take you a long time to create uh, your work, in six months, in seven months, in a year from now, if you're still working daily, if you are really serious about being committed to your artwork and your craft, you're going to get better at what you're doing. You are going to improve. You're going to become more efficient 
at your craft. It's not going to take you as long in six months or a year as it's taking you right now to finish things because you are gonna know the ins and outs of every detail. Chances are you're gonna be able to do this work in your sleep. You're gonna become more comfortable. You're gonna become more intuitive as to what colors you should use, what materials you should use, how it's going to come together. And that just comes with practice. So you will be able to feel better about how you're selling your work uh, because it's not going to take you as long. You are going to get better at it. And therefore, uh, you will be charging a little bit more consistently um, once you become better at it. So that's something that you should take away too. So what if uh, right now, which I'm sure some of you are probably saying, she did not help me at all. I still have no idea how to price my artwork. I do have another piece of advice for you. If you still have no idea how to charge your artwork, what I recommend and what I did was I went to art fairs. I went to art fairs because they are the best places that you can go to see what other artists are charging, what their customers are saying about their work. You, you are seeing things in person. You can talk to the artist uh, as a potential customer. You can listen to them talk about their artwork, how long maybe it took them to create their works see what they're charging you know obviously go into booths um, and look at people's work who is comparable to your own it's very important to do that because if you go into somebody's booth and they are extremely well established and they are years advanced um, then perhaps your work then obviously you're not going to uh, be able to have a, a, a comparable you know cost difference or something like that. So, so make sure that you check out people whose work is comparable to yours. Um, so that would be a great place to start if you're still trying to decide what to, to charge for your own work. Um, if you don't have any art fairs that are near you, go to Etsy. Etsy is a great resource to figure out how to charge your artwork. Um, if you are working in watercolor and you work, let's say you do wildlife on watercolor, Find a wildlife watercolor artist on Etsy who is about the same, about, about the same area of, of their art career as you are. If they're just starting out, you're going to know they're just starting out because you'll be able to see by how many reviews they have on their website. I think Etsy tells you how long they've been on Etsy. I know they used to search for that. I should know that. I've been on Etsy for a long time, but I don't know if they list that anymore or not. But that's another way you could check out how long they've been on Etsy, how many reviews they have, and if their work is comparable to yours, jot down the sizes, jot down what they are charging. Do that for about 10, I don't know, eight to 10 shops, and then you can price your work somewhere in the middle. Not too low, not too high, somewhere in the middle. That's a great place to start. Um, so anyway, I hope this video, I hope you found something useful in this video. Um, and if you happen to have a sense of how much you're charging and it's working for you and you feel comfortable sharing that formula or whatever, please put it down in the comment section so that everybody else can see it because you guys really are awesome in all of the great uh, pieces of advice that you're sharing with one another and it's really nice to get that engagement um, that sense of community here on my channel I want this to be a place where you can come and feel like you're getting the answers that you want um, hopefully I am able to give you some of those but sometimes I know I fail with that and uh, when I do um, a lot of you pick up the slack and help me out by posting some really really good advice in the comments section so keep that up if you like this video I would appreciate a thumbs up so other people can find my content if you're not a subscriber please consider subscribing to my channel I hope that my videos get better as I go along and I look forward to seeing you guys next time so have a good day everybody bye